So, hello everybody, this is Juntas. Today we are going to be taking a look at a Necromancer build that actually works going fully melee. So full disclaimer, the gameplay you're seeing right now is not optimal. You could also be shapeshifting out of bear form to do yeah, corpse explosion, other spells, even keep up your army. I just really prefer to showcase this build now without ever going anything but yeah, melee. It's awesome to see that this build actually works. I'm just very happy about this. Because the last time I saw a decent Necromancer build was Dol Rims. Uh, he's also a YouTuber. You should, uh, yeah, I'll probably just leave his uh, link in the description below. You should check out his channel as well. He's done some crazy projects. But um, yeah, he made a build that basically is the same as me, but in a bit different way. Uh, he also utilized this corpse explosion going in and out and so forth. This is just a bit more different, and yeah, I'm so happy to find this build. So, um, speaking about finding builds, this is actually the last build that I can think of in Diablo 2 that I haven't done that I would consider you know, worthwhile doing. Um, speaking about worthwhile, I try to only show builds that I would actually consider making myself that I would find useful. So, I have never really perhaps made like a Paladin build using Hand of Justice Rune Words because I feel like that's very crappy compared to yeah, a standard uh, Dream uh, Rune Words. And yeah, those builds are not really interesting for me. They also have to be kind of worthwhile. And this build is honestly the best way to go melee on a Necromancer that I've ever seen. So how do I kind of, you know, realize that I'm done now? I can't really think of, uh, you know, more builds that I want to show off than channel besides making old builds, uh, you know, redo them. Uh, it's all about JSP. You know, a lot of people are gonna flag, oh, JSP selling and budding and blah, 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 blah. The forums, the people on JSP, they're the most knowledgeable players in Diablo 2. Some of them have been playing way longer than I ever have, uh, without pretty much ever breaks or whatever. It's amazing. Uh, and they have so many good uh, guides, they have so many knowledgeable people. Uh, you can always find help, uh, you know, uh, getting ideas for builds, uh, gearing up, etc. Yeah, they can be a bit snarking, a bit elitist, but that's kind of how the old form goes. Um, basically, I try to find my guide through the un Unified Strategy and Guide Sticky, how it's pronounced. And it has uh, yeah, all class guides for every class uh, sticky. It, and it's just very easy to find and go through it. So something like the Necromancer Sticky has uh, Summoner PvP builds, Bone Spear PvP and PvM, Poison Nova PvM PvP, and then Miscellaneous guides. And in on the Miscellaneous Necromancer guides, I find the uh, you know, the more fun ones, Master Sabi, his link in the description below. So it's built around Beast and Brand, and Brand is basically only used for Amazon builds that don't want to use Faith or Wineforce usually. But in our case, we're going to be using the Brand Moonwood uh, on a Necromancer, which is very rare. I have never seen a build utilize a Brand except for an Amazon uh, using a bow, so it's pretty cool to see. Anywho, I think that's pretty much it. It's kind of fun to know that I've done every build that I would consider worthwhile doing now in Diablo 2. Um, I thought about that maybe a year or two ago as well and I found some new ones, but this has to be it. This is definitely the last one I would consider, you know, worthwhile doing. So with that said, I hope you enjoy the guide and thank you for watching. But not so fast. Before we move on, I want to tell you a little about my sponsor for today. The guy has worked with me before and he has been kind enough to sponsor me for a few new videos. So he runs a Seller Diablo 2 site for people who maybe just kind of want to yeah, jump in online and have some fun um, casually in a fast way. They can definitely get it from the, through this site. So I need to show off the site a little bit and we will do that. But you can skip ahead now if you don't do want to. So first of all, I wanted to mention they have a promotion for free runes. This is on both non-ladder and non-ladder. So just by signing up to the newsletter, you can actually get a free um rune. Uh, do notice how as the ladder progresses, you know, the older it gets, the rune will be upgraded. So that's a pretty sweet thing. The site also has a very decent terms of service. There is really nothing shady about this. You can see everything they kind of stand for and how they yeah, run their site. So it's nice and open. And if you happen to have any more questions, they have a fact on the site that can tell you everything. They accept PayPal and other currencies. They also have a very nice cashback system and something you should definitely take advantage of. That every order you make, you get 5% back on that. So it's explained right here on the cashback system. 
I had never really seen this utilized on other services that uh, yeah, run similar things for Diablo 2. I find that to be a cool thing. Uh, you get you know 5% back that you can then use on new orders on the site. That's a pretty cool thing. Anywho, I really, uh, yeah, I, I talked to the guy before, he had did some sponsor with him before. Um, yeah, he seems like an upfront dude and he seems, uh, yeah, dedicated to running this site. If I was ever gonna use the site myself, it would probably just be for buying a character that is pre-leveled. That definitely saves a lot of time. Uh, I don't really care so much for the gear, but uh, yeah, they do leveling services for at least a few classes here. So that's a pretty cool thing I would definitely consider. Anywho, I will leave a discount code in the description below. It will also help and support the channel if you want to do that. I thank you for that. That's definitely appreciated. But let's move on. So then, I think this build deserves to start off with the gear. It's uh, yeah, it's a bit complicated and we'll try to go through that because the rest of the stats and the skills are very easy. So I debate a bit on gloves choices. Um, you can survive without the recruits, but it's not really pretty. And since most of the damage is going to be through Brand, which uh, yeah, does Bone Spear, you're not really able to leech a lot with Lifesteal. So it's a bit hard to survive without recruits, and this is why I wanted to make the build work with that glove choice. Um, I'm not happy with it, having to rely on recruits for survival, but that was the best thing that I could do, since we're not really doing a lot of physical damage. Then Ravenfrost was also a bit of a debate. I used it mostly just to get a little bit of a tag rating and cannot be frozen. Um, yeah, maybe I could do without any attack rating at all from gear due to infinity, but I still felt like I wanted just a little bit and then infinity on top of that. The belt choice was also a bit fun. I went with some dry rest here to cap out the resistance. This is also rolled pretty high. Nothing amazing, but still pretty decent. Um, yeah, 24% faster hit recovery is also a thing I do want to note because getting a high amount of faster hit recovery in this build is pretty great to have. Uh, you could just go with maybe 30 only from the Gulliam's face, but I wouldn't really recommend that. So I went with some safety belt here. This is not crafted or anything, these can spawn on rare belts I believe. And then I went with a lifesteal ring here, just with some fire resist and poison resist. But again note that the uh, lifesteal doesn't really work, so you are kind of up to yourself what you kind of want to have the last ring slot for. And then I just used, yeah, uh, Fortitude, uh, High Lord's Wrath, Gore Riders, Gulliam's Face, nothing really interesting there. Um, yeah, and then Beast and Spirit on Switch, just to kind of boost Beast even better, even having some pre-buff going on. Uh, I think the Beast would be best in a Caduceus, but it wouldn't really matter too much. And then Brand here, this is the important one. I will throw some things up on the screen now, kind of just want you to understand the attack speed uh, dilemma. It has to be made in a, yeah, in my case, this is going to be a Chukunu. This is uh, the best base for the brand robot in my case for the fastest uh, attack speed possible. Um, yeah, it's not really a great uh, base to trade for. It will be very hard if you weren't gonna make it yourself because not a lot of people are gonna sell brand robot in this particular one. So that makes it a bit hard to get um, but yeah, if you can make it yourself online, whatever, you will probably be able to do that pretty easily because the runes doesn't really cost too much. You now there's no real high runes except for a jazz, so it's not too bad making brand compared to you know even trading a good wine force or making a faith. But the most important part here about brand is of course that we are 100% progging a bone spear every time we uh, yeah hit an enemy, and then also the amplified damage helps a lot. So there's no, there's no really trick to it, it's just cause uh, the brand has a nice proc. And then we should also tr do the skills right after cause brand obviously gets boosted a lot from your own skills. The stronger you can make your own bone spear, the better the brand wound wood is gonna work. So in my case I'm able to reach almost 2k bone spear damage. That's not a lot compared to a normal uh, PVM gear bone necromancer, but it's still pretty good. And considering how fast I attack with 2k bone spear going off every time I connect, that is a lot of damage, maybe even more bone spear damage than a normal geared one, and I will just try to show it all quickly off against the, uh, or maybe not, the game just keeps crashing for me today, it's hilarious, I think that's just a bug with my installation or something when I go to act 5. See, there I go, it's hilarious, what the hell blizzard. 
Anywho, moving on, I wanted to show the attack speed. So just notice now how many bone spears are actually going off. I can barely even see how many there is. Another thing is also that you kind of want to strategic place yourself between mobs so more of them are going to be pierced from the bone spear. But it's just insane to see just how fast I'm attacking. I can try to maybe just show it standing still as well. Um, yeah, the attack speed is ridiculous with this base. And again, I want to stress how just how important it is to make a uh, brand in this particular base. The guide in the description below, uh, which I'm following, uh, has more info on that. But yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's kind of like making the Rift Assassin, where you have to make the yeah the Rift Moonward in a special base as well, uh, which just makes it really hard to trade for or even find. But if you're able to, this is pretty much the build, because uh, you know all the other gear here, they cost really nothing. Nothing is really hard of the, to get in this case. Maybe beasts can be a bit annoying to get, but that's pretty much it. And then I also just wanted to show the inventory really fast. Uh, we're going with faster one walk sharp grand charms. These are really just good for faster one walk since we're not able to you know teleport. We're not really moving fast, etc. I want to have some faster run walk. I've always been uh, all about faster run walk in Diablo 2. I love that, especially when I cannot uh, utilize uh, Enigma. Um, so yeah, you can of course use free 2020s. Uh, you can stack resistance, small charms, etc. It's up to yourself. You could even go with uh, poison and bone skillers. That would be <laughs> actually probably very good as well. But I just went with this because it gives some. Uh, you know, some physical damage, it gives faster one wall, it gives some attack rating, it's pretty good. And then for small charms, I just went with, yeah, more faster one wall and some, uh, yeah, resistant small charms here. Nothing important, but uh, it still helps out capping resistance. It's pretty pretty much personal, but again, I just wanted to stress the faster one wall part, because it's really good to have some. And I can also just quickly show the mercenary, obviously as I showed off in the first part of the gameplay, without the affinity mercenary, I am not doing any damage, because I'm not able to hit targets uh, with that low amount of attack rating. But uh, for people who maybe don't know, Conviction or lowers defense of enemies, so you basically just have a... Yeah, nobody actually knows, nobody can really know for sure, but I would guess I would have about 100% attack rate or oh, hit chance to hit uh, using Infinity, even if it's only a level 12 Conviction Aura, so it's very good. Uh, obviously we're using Endowal Visage and Fortitude. And for the stats, it also kind of just depends on your final gear choice. I went full Vitality for a change, you know, a lot of my builds I always say, well, you don't need life, it's wasted, blah blah blah. But in this case, I really do need because I, I will I will give you uh, this one. My survival is not very good. If I don't get lucky procs with their cool gloves, it can be a bit hairy, especially against elemental mobs. So something like Thunder God's Belt would be good against souls. Uh, stacking some sort of a sword against those would be nice. Cause yeah, in hairy situations where I'm not really able to leech mobs, um, in the case again, if I can refer to my Rift Assassin, sometimes you kill mobs so fast before you're able to, you know, leech or proc the cool gloves. So by the time you maybe proc the cool gloves, the target dies or something like that, and you're not able to get your life back up. This is where, you know, having that 3000 life or whatever really helps. So I just went with a little bit into dexterity to equip the base here and then I went with some strain to equip my, yeah, I think it was Gulliam's face or spirit shield, yeah, spirit shield and then rest into vitality. But that's pretty much it for the gear, the stats and the build and everything. I wanted to do this a little bit fast because again, it's not very complicated. If you ever build, you know, a bone necromancer, so you know it's kind of up to yourself if you want to go with you know, a lot of summons, in my case it just went with, you know, one point into golems. And yeah, maxing out all the synergies for bone spear. Um, a lot of people will maybe also want to get a strong bone armor, but I didn't really care for that. And then one point into amplify damage, which was also not really important, because I'm never really gonna use it. Um, that's just my preferred playstyle, not going out of beer form ever. And then here in the end, I wanted to do just a Chaos 1 on players 1. Um, gonna have some issues with my mercenary not really following me that well. That is definitely, you know, it's bad on a Javasun where you have to break uh, lightning immunes, but it's ridiculously bad for this uh, particular build, uh, which is something that has been starting to annoy me uh, the most about the build so far playing it for, you know, not that long uh, a time, admittedly. 
but uh, that's definitely my biggest uh, yeah issue with it because without that <laughs> conviction or I really am not doing any damage well I have I think yeah 1.5k melee damage uh, with auto attack but <laughs> yeah that's really nothing uh, when it's you know there's really nothing going on there so I really yeah I hate when I don't have my mercenary nearby me you can also notice now where I'm kind of dropping life and I'm not really progging my Dracul's gloves and it gets a little dangerous and I want to use uh, yeah a potion or two and Dracul's is still not progging and I had to use all my potions there it's it's not really optimal um, I'm not really loving those situations You see now with the cult progging, however, it just, yeah, it's like a seal of paladin, smite of paladin, whatever, the life just gets instantly back. But uh, until that happens, it can be very dicey to play. Like now, for instance. <laughs> you know, I do say the build works, and it does, but for a melee necromancer build, you know, not utilizing anything but going melee, it's, yeah, it's a bit hard. I guess in order to give it a fair go, I will try to now also go out of beer form and do a bit of Cox explosion, you know, just yeah, realizing that I can't really do it all by my <laughs> auto attacks. So we will try to also view in that because I think a lot of people would be a bit triggered if I didn't at least try to also do a bit of a hybrid uh, shape shifting gameplay. So let's also try to do that now. So it's a bit clunky, but then you basically just have to, yeah, go out like this. And then perhaps go back in again. Oh, don't die from going out. That's a bit dangerous. <laughs> Since you don't have that much life. Yeah, honestly, it's a bit clunky <laughs> to go out of, uh, yeah, beer form if you're not careful about it. Just gonna have to pick up a few potions here, I guess. At least my mercenary can't really die that easily. Oh, I have to switch back my <laughs> normal weapon. And now the mercenary is not with me, so I'm not doing any damage. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will agree that maybe the build is not that perfect. Maybe I try to oversell it a little bit, but for going melee on a Nurkromance, I find that to be, you know, pretty decent uh, performance overall. I wouldn't uh, necessarily say this is a bad thing. Uh, another thing you can also do is actually just pay out of beer form <laughs> and leave that way. Uh, you can even uh, go without beer form and just play like this. It's definitely not pretty, but uh, it can uh, be done. This also then means that you're using your bolts, uh, which is a bit of an annoying thing to deal with, I suppose. But that can be done as well. So if you're into maybe going fully ranged on a necromancer, uh, that's uh, that's a thing as well. I wouldn't say it's necessarily better just because you're not really attacking that fast uh, compared to melee, so it's a bit slow. But that can be a thing for safety. Try to maybe get a good pack up here, pull a lot of mobs. That should do. Hope we can proc the cools maybe. Nah. There I go. Thank God it proc'd finally. Oh, and I forgot to switch my weapon. <laughs> uh, I couldn't understand why I wasn't making any damage. Now it's very clunky remembering both weapon switch and the, the mercenary part being away and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> So yeah, perhaps Dollar M's version where going a little more melee instead of relying on uh, yeah this brand new world would be a way to do it just because you have leech. You know, having survival is just so crucial in Diablo 2 again. The mobs doesn't really hurt much if you have a you know a normal standard build that has a lot of leech like a whirlwind barb or yeah even just yeah even just like a sorceress build that can be more you know safe with kiting or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just not really happy about the survival, but we talked a little about again where lifesteal doesn't really do a lot because the most of the damage you're doing, well, I would say 95% of all the damage you're doing is just coming from Bone Spear, and that obviously doesn't work with lifesteal. So it's a bit hard to kind of get the survival going. I would love also some feedback on the build if you think you have an idea for it. I don't think I'm quite done with this build yet. Maybe I can 
find another reason to utilize this one. It's definitely one of the more, you know, better ones of the quirky, weird builds that nobody has ever done. Well, only very few have done or even heard about. Um, so that's kind of like a fun thing to see kind of on the scale of, uh, you know, bad builds that are not ne necessarily good, but uh, can actually work. This one being one of the best ones. I guess you can always kind of like make a really poor build and try to make it work like using a, you know, a bow on a sorceress or whatever. But uh, I think uh, for no weird quirky builds that nobody really should do uh, if they're not really, you know, not in for like the ride of maybe not the best performance. I would say this is a, an acceptable one to consider making. But I think that's about it, so don't want to make it that much longer. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one. Bonus content. I wasn't quite done yet. I wanted to show a little bit thing from the Act 5 Mercenary one. Uh, a guide that I did recent. It's one of the most watched ones for the Mercenary ones. And I wanted to do quite a little update in this video just for the fun of it. Since I don't think I ran too long for this one. Stretching it out a little bit, I suppose. Um, but the best Act 5 mercenary setup, as you see from the video now, also I did back then. I tested it again using a Grief Colossus Blade, because I got a comment where it's saying that Grief would always be better, Grief is overpowered, etc. Also went with a Head Striker, uh, this one is really cool, it's an upgraded one as well, Ethereal, etc. This is a very strong uh, sword that was used uh, you know, back in 109 or something, before we got all the crazy overpowered rune words like Grief. Anywho, I tested these two excellent weapons uh, on the Act 5 Mercenary, and uh, yeah, Last Wish still wins out. It's just so much better. Also again, because with Last Wish I get a proc, I get a Fate, etc. Lifesteal. Um, which also means that I can safely utilize uh, Gulliam's face without having to worry about getting uh, yeah, leads from the helm, such as using Endowal's Resates and Fortitude and these weapons here together. So yeah, if you wanted to know a little more about the Act 5 Mercenary, go watch that video. Else, thank you again for watching. And as always, I love getting these little comments that makes me explore new options. But yeah, the last wish here for the Act 5 Mercenary is still the best one. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching and have a good one.